Hello everybody, it's me, Nate, a.k.a. Devil Dog, and I'm back with another game review. That's right, I'm back with another review. I've had my extra tall coffee, so let's do this. This is my review for Wild Hearts. It was developed by Omega Force, the same development team behind Dynasty Warriors, no joke, and published by EA Originals. Now, why I hate EA, I have to admit their Originals program is pretty superb in getting some unique games out on the market, and this is another one, even though it has some similarities with another title. Now, this game's release was on February 17th of 2023 for the PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series X and S, and PC. Now, as for a short plot synopsis, it goes like this. Master ancient tech to hunt down giant beasts. Wild Hearts is a unique twist on the hunting genre, where technology gives you a fighting chance against fearsome beasts infused with the ferocious power of nature itself. Take on these creatures alone, or hunt with friends in seamless co-op. No one remembers why the kimono began a rampage through a once prosperous Azuma. Fueled by desperation, these giant beasts weld the power of primal nature to be super destructive. Now, honestly, uh, you cannot sit here and play this game and not notice how it has a very much a uh, huge similarity to another game series, Monster Hunter. And that is a really good similarity to have because this one does stand out on its own and have some unique traits that makes it seem a little bit different and a little bit fresher. And um, honestly, I kind of like this one a little bit better than Monster Hunter. And I'll explain. Now, when you first boot up your game and you go through a you know, small section, you get to do a creative play player where you create your, your um, nameless hunter and it has a pretty decent amount of options to actually make a uh, character. I mean you can't make something that looks like Superman or or, or, you know, or, or or like the Incredible Hulk but you can make a pretty unique looking character and then they set you through your standard issue tutorial teaching you how to use your character's moveset and your special abilities, your normal attacks like that. And um, basically, the whole plot of this game, similar to Monster Hunter, is you're hunting down giant monsters. In this game, they're called kimonos that are in a giant open world. Now, the kimonos are, are quite a unique twist on the overall game. There are 21 different ones that you can fight throughout the game. Some are, like, small, and some are super large. The larger ones, naturally, are more difficult. And while you can not actually play through uh, this game single player, you can tell it is meant to have a couple buddies along with you. Um, now, these kimono creatures are really cool looking. They're like a hybrid uh, cross between giant normal animal creatures and different aspects of nature. I have noticed as you progress far enough into the game though, they start kind of reusing them, okay? Now, what I mean is like one you'll fight will be like a, a giant bird that looks like it's got vines growing out of it and later on you fight the same bird but this time it's got ice on it. So it's got different uh, earth elements attached to these creatures as you fight them but it's still actually pretty dang cool now like I said this is basically like a easier version of Monster Hunter uh, but it has a lot of new differences like first of all it takes place in feudal Japan which is a nice twist you know as you play as these characters and um, it has several different mechanics to it that actually uh, make it stand apart from the Monster Hunter series in a better way first up is the Karakuri mechanic if I said it right this is hands down the best feature of this game where it allows you to build and construct things in the game world um, either when you're just in the world to help you with traversal or when you're in the middle of a boss battle to fight bosses everything from structures like walls you could build to help you climb up to get a, a airborne attack on the enemy to get them to run into it to stun them and knock them down uh, you can upgrade this as you go through to where you could actually add it to where they, you can build stuff like catapults and line launchers and stuff like that. These jump pads that'll shoot you up in the air. And um, it's actually a really, really cool mechanic. And the thing is, whatever you build stays in the game world permanently. And if you go into someone else's game world, I've noticed you can see what they've built there. It's really kind of cool. Um, like I said, to uh, traverse this game world, you can also build zip lines and other modes of transport that stay there permanently. And I thought that was really kind of neat. It kind of reminded 
reminded me of Death Stranding's ability of people going in and uh, adding ladders and stuff or building bridges to make it more easily traversal, you know, to, you know have better traversal. And uh, that's what it is like in, in this. And I ha hands down, it's one of the neater um, aspects of the game because the gameplay itself is fundamentally just like Monster Hunter. You have your strong attack, your medium attack, and you can have different stat boosts and stuff like that. Uh, but the Karakuri mechanic really hands down stands out, allowing you to be able to climb areas you probably wouldn't be able to climb and build a lot of neat stuff. Now, this game's length is rather hefty. It, it'll clock in about 30 hours or so to get through this adventure, and um, it, it's pretty fun. Now, one thing I noticed, and I'll let you people know about this, is they don't really kind of tell you how you can do the multiplayer at first, but I found out that once you go and you warm your character up at a campfire, that'll bring up an option that allows you to play online with up to two other players, and that's where you can actually build, you know, make your, your matchmaking and stuff like that for the online mode. Um, honestly, I wish it was just right there from the start where you could just click, hey, jump in, jump out, but it does require you to go to these campfires to do that, but it's not really too big of a, a hindrance, you know, but uh, it's still interesting. Now, hands down, the other thing about this is I believe Monster Hunter had 11 different weapons. This only has nine, uh, but they all do have their own unique traits and different combos that you can have, which each uh, of your uh, weapons, which is actually cool. And on top of that, you do have a standard issue armor and weapons forge you can go to where you uh, collect items throughout your adventure and you use these items um, to upgrade your weapons. And by doing this, uh, there's a giant skill tree, a weapon skill tree. It's all interconnected like a, a big giant uh, fence uh, clock, you know, like a, it's like a giant fence of, of these nodes you can pick that all connect together and where you can actually apply stuff from raw damage, elemental damage. Uh, your weapons have something known as inherent skills, which are unique to each weapon you have. And they also have something called inherited skills, which you can actually use and transfer over to other weapons, which is really cool. And like I said, the, the weapon skill tree is a massive giant uh, tree that inco incorporates every single weapon, which is uh, kind of daunting at first, but once you get the hang of it and you realize it gives you a lot more flexibility to move stuff to other weapons and find when you really like to stick with, um, it actually makes it better. Now, the uh, armor tree, uh, as I call it, is a little bit different. It seems like every single piece of your armor has its own separate uh, modification that you could do to it. So, unlike the weapons tree that is gigantic, the armor one uh, is separate for each individual piece that you have that you can go through and upgrade it. Now, hands down, I have to say, Wild Hearts, to me, uh, plays like an easier version of Monster Hunter. So, if you had thought that Monster Monster Hunter was a little bit too hard for your tastes. Um, this one is seems a little bit easier. It does have a couple new mechanics to it that I think make it stand out of the box of being um, a little bit more original, like it being in Japan, you know, feudal Japan. Uh, definitely the Karakuri mechanic. I do like how they have the armor and weapons forge set up. And um, the enemies, hands down, are really neat. They really are. I like the fact that they're hybrids of actual nature creatures with, uh, you know, different uh, nature abilities, you know, like elements and stuff. The only thing I would have to say is I do think they uh, kind of start reusing them a little bit too much, you know, almost like a, a color swap on the enemies, but they do change their stats. So if you're coming across, uh, across the firebird and iceberg, you got to, you know, adjust your um, elemental attacks accordingly to help to be able to beat these monsters. But in the end, I actually enjoyed this. I really liked the, uh, the Karakuri mechanic. Um, I thought that it might have been a little bit easier if they stream line uh, the uh, weapons um, you know forge the uh, you know uh, weapons tree a bit uh, but once I got used to it it wasn't really a, a, any sort of detriment to it and honestly considering this came from the people that made dynasty warriors this is a welcome change to their normal formula honestly it plays pretty good I have noticed it doesn't look the best even on PlayStation 5 it does look like a last gen game but let's be honest um, Omega Force is known for most of their games not really looking too visually appealing. It's normally about a lot of stuff going on on screen at once. And um, honestly, I've had some glitches. There are some issues with some slowdown I've had, even on PS5. It doesn't really feel like the game is really fully optimized that well, um, but it doesn't break the game. I will say, though, for the price. I, I would have to say for the price, for the overall uh, quality product you get, I think the price is still a little too high, but it's not something that I could say stay away from. If you're a huge fan of the Monster 
Hunter series and games where you go out with a couple buddies and tackle giant enemies in open worlds, I can definitely recommend Wild Hearts today. Um, whatever system you have, if you're happy and lucky enough to have an Xbox Series X or S, a PS5, or a PC, um, honestly, hands down, I can actually say, pick up and play this game. It's actually a really fun game with some really cool additional um, mechanics that are thrown in the mix that make it stand out to be somewhat unique on its own, even though it's obviously, uh, you know, hugging on the coattails of, uh, you know, Monster Hunter, it still does enough on its own to make it stand out to be somewhat fresh and unique. But that's just my personal opinion. Please leave in the comments with yours. I want to thank each and every single one of you for watching this review. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, let me know in the comments below if there's anything I missed that you think I should have talked about. And remember here at Devil Dog Gaming, we always end our videos by saying, have fun, play hard, and remember people, the devil is in the details. Peace out until next time.